Eric, Jared, congratulations. Your weapons were strong enough to propel you into this final round of competition, which means you're both one step closer to the title of Forged and Fire champion in that check for $10,000. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to create an iconic blade from history. The Hunga Munga. The term hunga munga refers to a variety of Central African throwing knives, all of which feature a series of double-edged iron blades attached to a rawhide handle. The hunga munga was not only formidable in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but could be thrown from a distance, with some reports claiming it had a throwing range of up to 250 feet. As armor was not used often in Central Africa, this type of throwing iron was particularly devastating. The hunga munga was often very valuable and could be traded for goods. The hunga munga was also wielded by Buffy Summers in the cult series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. First thing I thought was <laughs> I was not expecting that. Your weapon must fall within the following parameters. It must have a sharpened head, crescent blade, a spear, and a spike. You must also include a handle arm with a sharpened spike above the handle. It must be an effective working version of that deadly weapon. However, we want you to make something that's unique that could only come from your forge. I'm looking forward to decking this hunga manga out and putting my own signature style and the details, the decorative work. I'm trying to think of how complicated this thing will be to build. It's complicated forging. You will have five days at your home forge to complete this challenge. At the end of those five days, you will return and present your finished weapons to our panel of expert judges. Only after they've subjected your weapons to a series of brutal tests will they declare one of you the Forge and Fire champion who walks away with that check for 10 grand. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. First day, really happy to be back in my shop. I have never made anything even remotely like this before. This is like a cross between a sword, boomerang, chakram, battle axe. <laughs> I gotta plan this out. I'm gonna start with this blade, then pull this off from the side, and then start working the spike in. This is a wild build. So I'm gonna have to heat this all up. I'm gonna have to drive this down. It's almost a chess game. I've gotta think like five moves ahead on this thing, because if I screw up once, it could completely ruin the piece of steel I got, and I gotta start over. This chunk here, hopefully turn into my sickle blade here. Maybe if I heat this area here, swinging this out of the way here. I'm gonna push that up into there. Then I can push this around. That spear point's gonna be up. It's day three. I'm a little sore, but I got the blade profiled, forged out, and I feel great about my blade design. Bam. Still think it looks like something from Whoville. Now it's time for the heat treat. Everything leading up to this point is just critical. All right, here we go. Beautiful. I was totally giddy when I got it out of the quench, and I just want to give it a test throw. This thing is definitely a lethal weapon. It's not a prop. It's definitely something you don't want thrown at you. It will stick. <laughs> Plan for today is finish up the pommel, carve in the sunbeam, and then uh, wrap the handle. This was a really difficult piece to forge and to create. Maybe I should have some, some worries going into the final round, but I really don't. I did the best I can do. I'm super confident in what I made. We'll just see how it pans out. I think this thing's gonna just perform spectacularly. My competitor, he better really bring his A game because I'm feeling good. Bladesmiths, to see how sharp your blades are, I will take your weapon and I will test the crescent-shaped blade and the spear. If your blade is sharp, it should last your way cleanly through this stretch leather. Jared, you're up first. Are you ready? I am. Let's do this.
Well, Jared, your handle wrap feels good to the hand. The blade of your crescent and your spear right there is sharp enough to lacerate cleanly through the stretch out leather. It will cut. Good job, sir. Thank you. Eric, you're up. Ready? Yes, sir. OK, Eric, nice grip. Your crescent edge over here, at the initial start, not so sharp, but once you got it going, it lacerated. Your spear edge, same thing. It started off here, but once it got going, it lacerated. Not all edges are as sharp as the other, but it is sharp enough to cut. My concern was this design that you have over here for this. You know, Being that it's a weapon that you move around, having that pointed at me is never a good idea. Right. Otherwise, though, this blade will cut. Good job. Thanks. That first slice skipped across, and it got to a part where it was sharper. Blade's not performing well. I'm quite disappointed. Bladesmiths, this is a kill test. The Hungamunga was a weapon with multiple configurations of blades on top of a blade. To see how lethal your weapon is according to its design, I will take your weapon, and I will deliver multiple strikes on this ballistics dummy. Let's see how lethal your blade is. Jared, you're up first. You ready? Definitely. Like he's bleeding. <laughs> well, Jared, every facet and design of your blade will definitely do damage. Your crescent edge nicely lacerated through. The tip on that hooked and gutted whatever was in there. Your small blade, I had to angle a little bit because there's not much space over there. But as you can see, if you work it according to its design, you can jab right into it. And of course, your spear tip crushed through the bones and into the heart. This, sir, will kill. Great job. Thank you. Eric, you're up next. Yes, sir. Let's do this. Didn't get that laceration there. Hmm. OK, Eric, your spike right there, it's in a good position because I can easily go in there without worrying about this getting in the way. So we come to the spear tip. That went through all the way, broke bone and into the heart. Your weapon will kill. Good job, sir. Thank you. Next up is the strength test. For that, I'll pass you on to Dave. Gentlemen, we've seen that the Hungamunga can be used as a close quarters weapon, but it was specifically designed to be thrown. So to test the strength of your weapon, I'm going to throw it three times into our wooden target here. If your heat treat is sound, the structural integrity of your weapon should hold up to the impact. If not, we could have a catastrophic failure. Jared, you're up first. Ready? All right. Safeties. Nice. nice. Damn, split that log. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, uh, uh. Nice. No catastrophic failures. I'm happy it didn't break. Self and all. Yeah, it's the scratch. Really happy with my design. Final throw sticks in beautifully. Well, as you can see, this is a dangerous weapon all the way around. It feels really good in the hand. All that forward weight makes it rotate beautifully. Your edge is still a razor blade. I and mean, once this thing's traveling, I don't want to be on the other side <laughs> of it. Your cord wrap made it really nice to throw. Well executed. Thank you. Eric, your turn. You ready? Let's do it. All right. There you go. <laughs> nice. Well, Eric, this feels pretty good in the hand. Uh, I like all this detail you did down in here. Thank I mean, you. it doesn't affect the throw, it doesn't affect the strength, but still, it's there. Dug in nicely. When it hit up here, it kind of bounced out. It, it scored up the wood it would have taken a man out. The other two throws dug in nicely. Looks to me like your edge is held up fine. That's yeah, still all right and tight. Nicely done, Eric. Thank you. 
Eric, Jared, you've both done fantastic work on your Hung Among Us. However, in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forest and Fire champion. Jerry, congratulations. You are the Forest and Fire champion. Eric, your Hungamunga did not make the cut. Dave will explain. Eric, the addition of that spike on the back was a question mark. But in the end, it came down to the overall finish and construction and the way it did not perform in the sharpness test. That's why we got to let you go. Eric, please surrender your Hungamunga. The judge's feedback, I agree completely. I have no regrets whatsoever. I came here to prove that I could do it, that I could overcome a task that was seemingly impossible. I may not be the Forged and Fire champion, but I can only go up from here. Jared, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel? I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> it's kind of a shock right now. I... That's straight up the prettiest and most terrifying thing we've ever had on the show. Thank you. I mean, the combination of the two. I want it. That's how I feel about it. And I don't feel like that about a lot of knives, but that's a cool piece. Thank you. I won. It's still kind of settling in. <laughs> 10 grand is going into the shop. There'll probably be a little trip involved for my fiance and myself. Boy, having the title of Forge and Fire champion, it's going to definitely be a, a game changer.